In this segment, we'll discuss an important result called the bolzano weierstrass theorem, which states that every bounded real sequence has a convergent subsequence. Here's an overview. We'll start with the completeness axiom for real numbers, discuss convergence and limits of real sequences, introduce Cauchy sequences and link them to the completeness axiom, define boundedness and monotonicity, and then state and prove the theorem. So we'll start with the completeness axiom for real numbers. So if you recall our discussion of the least upper bound property for ordered sets, we define this as follows. We say that a set S satisfies the least upper bound property if every non-empty subset that's bounded from above has a least upper bound in S. And the completeness axiom for real numbers simply states that the real numbers satisfy the least upper bound property. And this implies, as a direct consequence of a theorem that we have already proved, that every non-empty subset of R that's bounded from below has a greatest lower bound in R. And we know again from an earlier segment that the rational numbers do not satisfy the least upper bound property and hence don't satisfy the axiom. Now we've already defined real sequences and subsequences, so let's talk about limits and convergence. We define an epsilon neighborhood or epsilon ball around a point x in the set of real numbers as the set of points that are all within a distance epsilon of x. And we say that a sequence xn converges to x if for any epsilon positive, however small, the terms of the sequence eventually enter and remain within an epsilon neighborhood of x. And in this case, we say that the sequence xn is convergent and x is its limit. And the notation for this is shown on the slide. Now you should verify for yourself that every real sequence has at most one limit, and you can easily do this in a couple of steps by contradiction. Suppose that a sequence xn has two limits. Let epsilon be any number less than half the distance between these two points and you can show that it's impossible for the sequence to be within an epsilon neighborhood of both of these points. Next we define Cauchy sequences. We say that a real sequence is Cauchy if for any epsilon positive there exists a natural number n such that once you get past this term in the sequence every pair of terms is within epsilon of each other. Now since this condition doesn't depend on knowledge of the limit of a sequence it's often easier to verify than convergence directly. An alternative way of stating the completeness axiom is to say that every real Cauchy sequence converges to an element in R. Now you can easily construct Cauchy sequences of rational numbers that do not converge to an element in the set of rational numbers, and an example is shown on the slide. Every element in this sequence is a rational number, but its limit is not rational. And this is just another way of saying that the rational numbers do not satisfy the completeness axiom. Next we define boundedness. We say that a sequence xn is bounded from above if the terms in this sequence viewed as a set is bounded from above. In other words, if there exists some real number k such that every term in the sequence is less than or equal to k. And we say that it's bounded from below if the set of terms is bounded from below. And if it's bounded from both above and below, we say that the sequence is bounded. Now you should verify for yourself that every convergent real sequence is bounded and again, you can do this very quickly in a couple of steps. You know that eventually the sequence is within an epsilon neighborhood of its limit for any epsilon positive. And that just leaves a finite set of terms that may be outside of this epsilon neighborhood. That finite set of terms is clearly bounded. And you can use this to show that every convergent real sequence is bounded. But you should just write down these steps and tie up the loose ends. Next, we define monotonicity of sequences. We say that a real sequence Xn is increasing if every term in the sequence is less than or equal to its successor term. And we say that it's decreasing if every term is greater than or equal to its successor term. And a real sequence that is either increasing or decreasing is said to be monotonic. And we're going to finish this segment by proving two claims that together will lead us to the bolzano weierstrass theorem. We'll prove that every monotonic and bounded sequence is convergent. And we'll prove that every real sequence has a monotonic subsequence. Let's start with the first claim, every monotonic and bounded sequence is convergent. So let xn be increasing and bounded above. We can easily do this for decreasing sequences in the same way. Let's define S as the set of terms in the sequence. Now we know by the completeness axiom that since this set is bounded above, it must have a least upper bound or supremum in the set of real numbers. Let's call this supremum x and we're going to show that the sequence actually converges to this supremum. And we do it as follows. We know that for any epsilon positive, eventually there must be a term, let's call it xm, which is above x minus epsilon, 
If this weren't the case, then x minus epsilon would be an upper bound for s. And that can't be true because x is the least upper bound for s. So eventually there is a term that is above x minus epsilon. And since this is an increasing sequence, every term after that point must be larger than x minus epsilon. And furthermore, every term must be less than or equal to x because x is an upper bound for the set of terms. This proves that xn is eventually within an epsilon neighborhood of x, and this is true for any epsilon positive, so xn converges to x. And we can construct a proof for decreasing sequences in exactly the same way. Now consider the second claim, that every real sequence has a monotonic subsequence. So here's how we prove this. Consider a sequence xn. We'll say that xk is a dominant term in this sequence, if there is no term that appears later in the sequence that is strictly greater than xk. Now if xn contains infinitely many dominant terms, they constitute a decreasing subsequence. Why is this? Because every dominant term can't be greater than the previous dominant term, by definition. And so if we collect together all dominant terms in a subsequence, we know that every term has to be at least as great as its successor. And since we have an infinite number of such terms, we have a decreasing subsequence. Now what if we don't have an infinite number of dominant terms? Well, then there must be some last dominant term. Let's call it xm. And we set m equal to 0 if no term is dominant. Now we're going to construct an increasing subsequence starting with the term xm plus 1. Now xm plus 1 is not dominant, so there must exist a larger term later into the sequence. Let's find the first such term and add that to our subsequence. Now that itself is not dominant, so there exists a larger term later into the sequence. And we add that to our subsequence and continue in this manner to get an increasing subsequence. So we've shown that every monotonic and bounded sequence is convergent, and we've also shown that every real sequence has a monotonic subsequence. If you put these two facts together, you'll get the bolzano weierstrass theorem, which states that every bounded real sequence has a convergent subsequence. And that's it for this segment.